So before we get into this video, please subscribe to my newsletter if you haven't already. I share it once a month, sharing sort of stories, experiences, and links to interesting things. So make sure to check it out. So for those wondering, where's Olia and what have you done with him? I had laser eye surgery last week. It's why I'm not wearing glasses anymore. I'm not going to be wearing glasses moving forward. I don't know if I'm even used to it myself yet. Like when I look at myself, I've got the screen there next to my camera. When I look at myself, I think to myself, I look weird, <laughs> but I've just got to get used to it. No more glasses going forward. Laser eye surgery, I was in and out in like 20 minutes. The healing process was a bit sort of uncomfortable for the first day, but after that, it was completely fine. My eyes are still healing. So that eye especially is still quite red. So hopefully it's not too distracting. I wanted to go through what is basically my easiest source of income, my easiest passive income, my favorite source of income over last year. I was actually supposed to make this video in January. I just didn't have time. So I'm making it now in the middle of February. That source of income is my digital products, specifically the products that I list on Gumroad. So I have wallpapers, Notion templates, eBooks, presets, uh, all sorts of digital products listed on my Gumroad profile. And if we look at how much I made, let's just get straight into it. Last year, I made $72,800 from my digital products, which is pretty darn good if I do say so myself. There's a lot of reasons why I love this income source which I wanted to share in this video. And I want to also share why you should consider making digital products as well and selling them online. So of course, the best thing about something like this is that it is just pretty passive. Once you've made the products, it doesn't really need any maintenance, if any, like you, you just don't really need to spend much time or money on maintaining those products. They're so passive, they just sit in the background. Once you've made them, once you spent the time making them, they can sit on your website, sit on a store or something like that, and they can just be sold whenever. Whenever you can market them, whenever you can get a customer, whatever it is, they are very, very passive. I literally make money whilst I sleep. So I'll get up in the morning and I can see the sales that have come in through the night. I don't have to sort of be there. It's not like a physical store where you have to be there, where someone has to be there, maybe fulfilling orders or taking on customers, taking payments, stuff like that. Nothing like that. That's what's so good about something like this. It just runs in the background and sales can come in at any time. Sales can come in, like I said, when I'm asleep, when I'm on holiday, when I'm not specifically working, when I'm out with friends, I can see the sales coming in on my phone. It is such a nice way to make money. And yeah, it's one of the easiest sort of passive ways to make money, I think. Creating them is also very easy. So most of the stuff that I sell on my store is stuff that I already use myself, especially when it comes to like photo presets, Lightroom presets. I'm already using these presets on my pictures. So it only makes sense to package them up and sell them online. Other stuff like wallpapers also really don't take me much time. I usually make them in places like Figma or Photoshop or Pixelmator, stuff like that. They'll take me a couple of hours to make. And yeah, they can make me thousands, which is just fantastic. But what I've started doing now is, because I've sort of hit the limit of what I can design and what I can make. What I've started doing now is I've started commissioning, hiring, other artists to make wallpapers for me. So if I find an artist out there and I like their style, I'll email them and be like, hey, I'd love for you to make, you know, 20 wallpapers for me, 20 renders in 6K resolution, whatever it might be. I'll package them up and then I'll sell them. So there is cost involved there, but if you have some artistic chops, I like to think that I do because a lot of the wallpaper packs I have made myself, you can just spend your own time, a few hours making those wallpapers, making those products and then selling them. I'm even considering now hiring other professionals to make me products. So things like Notion templates, mini courses and anything else that maybe I can't make, but I think would make sense for my audience. I've been sort of experimenting with the idea. If you're someone who can make digital products, maybe you don't have the audience though, maybe you don't have the marketing chops, maybe, it's better you work with someone like me. So get in touch with me if anyone out there is interested. I'd love to hear and see what ideas you have, what products you can make, and I'd love to see if they're a good fit for my audience. So yeah, please do get in touch. Marketing them. So naturally, all of the products that I have, I market them to my audience. I market them to people on my main channel. I market them to people on my newsletter, things like that. These people are already interested in me and what I have to say and what I have to sell. So. It's quite an easy sell, you could say, but even then when I say it's an easy sell, I'd say like it's like 1%, maybe less than 1% of my audience is actually buying those digital products. Not everyone is going to buy them, which is completely fine because I'm not expecting everyone to buy them. I'm only expecting people 
who are actually going to use them you also have the money you have the disposable income because a lot of these products that i have you don't necessarily need them they're very much sort of wants they're not really things you need to survive and depend on so i don't expect there to be a huge market for them but because i'm using them myself like i said earlier because i'm making them myself because it's stuff that i use myself it only makes sense to package them up and sell them to people who follow me online my main forms of marketing right now for my digital products is through videos it's through my socials like instagram TikTok, twitter and through my newsletter. So I have an email list where I share products that I've made recently and I can get sales through that as well. But what I found most powerful when it comes to my products is that if a person has already bought a product from me, they're more likely to buy a product again in the future. So when I make a new wallpaper pack, maybe I'll make a new Lightroom preset pack, whatever it might be, I will email all of the previous customers that have bought my previous wallpapers or have bought my pre previous presets. And those customers are so much more likely to buy my products rather than a new customer. So I think a lot of people do sort of get tied into always trying to get new customers. And of course, when you're a new business, you do need to get new customers. Over time, as you build a customer base, it's so much easier to continuously sell to that existing user base that you already have. Now, if I didn't have an audience, I would most likely be spending money on advertising, sort of like paid ads, like Google ads, Instagram ads, TikTok ads, whatever it might be. Maybe I ask another creator to share my products and I'll pay them. Advertising is something that has to be done. It's just a part of making any business, of selling anything. I find it really bizarre how almost allergic people are to advertising. Like, I just don't seem to understand why people are so against advertising and marketing, especially when they're building their own businesses. I see comments in my videos of like, hey, how do I get my customers? How do I... How do I get people to buy the products? And it's marketing. You've got to spend time on marketing. I actually think a good rule is maybe spending 10, 20, 30% of your time making the products. And then the 70% of the time, the rest of the time, you should be marketing those products. You should be trying to get them out there as much as possible. Because what is the point of having great products if you're not showing them to anyone? Like it just doesn't make sense. An average product with good marketing will always, always beat an amazing product with no marketing. It really is as simple as that. Like you need to invest time, effort, money into learning marketing, into learning advertising. If you don't have an audience like I do, you need to figure out some other way. I think making an audience though makes the most sense. It's the easiest and the cheapest way. The only thing is it does take time. But as long as you make an audience where you're providing value, where you're gaining followers that are actually interested in what you have to say, it's so much easier to make that following. The most important thing is providing value. These digital products are also highly, highly profitable due to them not costing much to make. There's no cost in maintaining them and you can sell an infinite amount pretty much because it's just a digital product. There is no physical sort of aspect to it. The profit margins are insane. You know, when I look at my $72,800 that I've made, um, I'd say 90%, 80 to 90% is profit. You know, I've spent money here and there on things like getting products made, my own time, and maybe uh, like website hosting, whatever else, and uh, sort of like transaction fees and things like that. But 80 to 90% of that is pure profit. That's what I take home. Of course, I do have to pay tax on it as well. So in the UK, I'd have to pay like 40, 45% tax, whatever it is. Uh, I usually have my accountant sort that out, but yeah. 90%, 80-90% is pure profit. The other great thing about digital products is that it's instant delivery. It's not like a physical product. It's not like buying something from Amazon where you buy it, then you have to wait a day or maybe a few days for it to arrive. With a digital product, the customer gets it straight away. There's no waiting whatsoever. Usually there's a download button or they get a download button in their email. That I think is very, very underplayed. I don't think people really value or understand the value of that because when someone has spent their money, they want their reward for it. They want whatever they pay for as soon as possible. And with digital products, they get it as soon as possible. So that's just a quick video on my favorite income stream from last year, my best income stream, my most profitable income stream, I'd say as well, because I'm really not spending an absolute ton of time making these products. I spend most of the time just marketing them, like I said, in my videos, on my socials, on my newsletter. That's where I think you, you've got to really spend the time. Making the products, I'd say, is actually fairly easy. Like coming up with product ideas is actually fairly easy because there's so many digital product ideas out there. I've already done videos on my channel sharing digital product ideas. I'll have another one coming soon because the last one I did, I think is coming up to like six, seven, maybe even nearly a year old. 
So I'll have another video on sort of digital product ideas coming soon, but you can find so many online. Like you can make any sort of digital product. If you can, if you're willing to put the time in to learn it and make it, then you can make it. And maybe you can work with another creator to sell that product if you don't have your own audience or you can build your own audience. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.